People laid their armor aside and they just began to drink. And then some people just took the water with their hand and their eyes focused on where they're going and they were lapping it like the dog. How many of them? 300. Those committed people, those righteous people, those consecrated people, those 300 people united with Gideon to go and fight the enemy. And their mind was not on self-interest, self-program, and self-development, and progress for self. Their mind was on the battle of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. That's why they did what they did. And now it says in this place, chapter 8, verse 4, And Gideon came to Jordan, and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him. Read the rest of that verse. Again. I want to have everybody chorus it out. Won't you go? 300. That's how you know people whose minds are not on their own personal agenda. That's how you know people who are willing, even if it takes a very life and a last drop of blood, this glory of the Lord must be visible, must be, must be seen. And if, even though they were faint, it says faint and yet pursuing them, pursuing the enemy. And I'll not fight any personal battle. It's for the Lord. And these 300 people wholly and united together out of the 300 not one not two not five not just a little bit you know said i cannot go on i'm tired they should have known that this is a very terrible project of campaign to go through they were fake and yet they were pursuing they were united chapter 7 of judges verse 17 Judges chapter 7, verse 17. It says, And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. That's the unity. That's the fellowship. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. As I do, so shall ye do. Do. I pray that God will keep us together in that love, in that fellowship, in that unity. And if we do the, as I do social, you do, do the same thing, say the same thing, preach the same thing, go the same direction. In First Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. In First Corinthians 1, 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. That's fellowship and unity. When you go back to your various locations, your various church localities, that you preach the same thing. When you have the various house fellowships, that you preach the same thing, maintain the same standard. You will not say, that's what they said. This is what I'm doing. That's what they concluded. This is what I'm doing here. This is my territory. This is my empire. This is my palace. Whatever they say, that's all right for them. For me, here is mine. No. That you all say the same thing, speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you, but that she be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I pray God will confirm that in our midst. Give me a good amen. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Holiness and unity in a growing flock. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. Look at that verse again. Let's take the concrete words there, the concrete blocks there, 
and the concrete things that are used to build our normal building. Ye stones built up into a house. I'm, I've read it that way so you can think about what he's saying. I want you to picture the house and we lay the foundation. We put this block on, we put another block on, we put another block on, and eventually we finish the building. You know what? In a building, a house, some of the stones or blocks are going to be below, and some of the stones are going to be above. What if one of those stones will say, I've been in this position now, in this house, for one year, one and a half years, and I, I, I like variety. I like experimenting. I like new experiences. I don't want to remain there where I am. I think I'll prefer to transfer to this other place. You know, if those stones begin to argue like that and begin to desire like that, it's going to give us a problem. That house is going to fall. It will disintegrate. It will be divided and crum it will crumble. It's when the stone, each stone and each block will remain where it has been put. That's when you are going to have that house and that home uniting and staying, remaining. Now look at that. This is ourselves. We are the lively stones, and the Lord has put you here, and he puts another lively stone above you, another lively stone above you, another lively stone beside you, and we cannot complain. I don't like where I am. If you don't like where you are, you are going to cause a problem to the house, to the spiritual house. Look at that again in verse 5. He also, as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer all spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but she, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that she should show forth the praises of him, not your own praise, not self-exaltation. You know, always bragging about yourself. You cannot finish a sentence or you cannot finish a conversation without talking about who you are, what I've done, where I am, where I've reached, and this, and that's what I'm thinking, what I'm planning. Stop talking about yourself. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye as individuals and then all together might show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're looking at point number three now is the passion for harvest and unity in a growing flock. The passion the desire, the aspiration, and then it is the ambition, the ambition we have, and a concentration on the harvest. It says the passion for harvest and unity in a growing flock. The Lord Jesus Christ is concerned about the harvest. And we as children of God, we're concerned about the harvest. Is that where your heart is? I said, is that where your heart is? Say yes. Praise the Lord. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Parallel Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.